I think this is it, actually. Do you see the ditch that sort of runs around there? That's man-made. That to me looks very much like some sort of the start of some sort of fortification. Maybe that's why they think this is actually where the fortress was. <clears throat> it's now uh, the church of the village, although there are some other churches. Oh, it's ringing. Possibly 11 o'clock. So they think this was the site of the actual fort, protecting a river that's sort of just on the other side. Yes, I was saying there were, there are a couple of other churches, and in fact they were along towards Stid Gardens. I found a map that showed me some of the sort of sites around here, several of which are up that road. Stid Gardens was not on it. <laughs> there were several little churches, but they looked like they were sort of rather more defunct. I don't think you'd be able to get into them. Uh, you'd have to walk quite away and there's no path. It drops off into a sort of country road which has a speed limit of 60 miles an hour. No, I, I don't think I'm going to, to, to do that. Uh, but this is much better, much better. I don't think by the looks of it it's open, but we'll have a look and see. Playtime. <laughs> it's just gone noon and I'm still in Ribchester and I have visited the Roman Museum. The Roman Museum is uh, dedicated to the fort that used to be here. The name Chester should give it away because Chester is a Roman, uh, a Roman word a fortress um, and Rib has come from the name of the river here the Ribble now there's one thing that's very interesting about this uh, place I was talking to the woman who sort of runs the uh, the museum it's small but it's incredibly informative um, and uh, she was telling me that the, because uh, I, I explained about my walk and crossing the uh, the river and that big bridge. And um, sorry, there's people going past above. <laughs> and uh, I said, you know, I, I come to the bridge, the big bridge. And uh, there's no sign of anything, you know, near there. And she said, no, she said, that's because um, that's not the place of the river crossing that the uh, the um, the fortress was set to protect. In fact, the place of the river crossing is unknown because, for one good reason, and this is sort of why I'm here to show you this stretch of river. This is a stretch of the river that was not here. <laughs> Okay. I don't know if you can see how the river comes out from round here, flows around here, but then there it flows back round. Well, originally the, the water did not flow around this block on the other side, it flowed through. So the river has changed its course, meaning that some of the uh, um, uh, some of the uh, Roman uh, fortress, this end of the Roman fortress, is actually beneath the water. Yeah, this end goes off into the ditch. And we were, I was also right about the church and the earthworks on the other side are the um, perimeter of the fortress around there. And they would sort of come down 
up straight into the water. So a good little bit of this, in fact probably all of this, was dry land uh, during the Roman times. The Romans obviously took a name um, uh, they did not name the place Ribchester. Ribchester is a, I think probably a slang term for, you know, fortress on the river, Ribble. Um, the Romans had a, a proper name for it, and I can't remember, it begins with B, it's, it, it's, um, it's, it's quite a long name. And they know various things, quite a lot of things in fact, about who was here and when. They know, for example, that the uh, the little town that was uh, one presumes sort of Celtic at that point in time uh, was here when the Romans invaded. Uh, they know that they built the fortress here. First, it was a uh, a um, a sort of more of a, an encampment than a fortress so it was originally sort of a, a, an earthworks type fortification for when they were invading this was a key point on the river because there was a set of Roman roads that had cross crossroads just here so this river crossing was important to guard for everything north of here up towards Hadrian's Wall uh, and we're on the Carlisle side of the country rather than Newcastle. So our main focus is all the Roman forts that I didn't look at during my Newcastle tour. <laughs> um, there's also a crossroads uh, um, running the east-west as well, but I was less certain as to what that was actually sort of more or less about. Um, but the Manchester to Carlisle... Uh, sort of ran straight through here. The uh, 20th, I think, legion returned uh, after the invasion uh, was sort of deemed complete because this was the... Um, we're, in, we're still in Brigantium territory here. Um, I, I live in Brigantium territory and it goes all the way uh, from Newcastle sort of it's not quite Sheffield, but it, it covers all this sort of industrial north, Bradford, Leeds, and all the moors. Uh, so, uh, that part of the world was given over to the Romans through treaty, um, originally, although there were disputes. There was a faction that did not adhere to the treaty, um, and that gave the Romans the excuse to actually formally uh, take over rather than give the uh, Brigantes Federation it, it sort of uh, client um, status so to speak it, it was actually annexed but um, uh, so at that point it was rebuilt in stone as a proper uh, fortress um, for the uh, by the 20th Legion, I think. Uh, I could be wrong there. I think it was the 20th. I know the place also held um, uh, or, or had stuff done to it at a later date by the 6th Legion, and uh, they, I think, are a Hadrian's Wall stationed um, Legion, whereas the 20th, I think, is further south. Um, and I think that's what this place fell under originally. I think it was supposed to be sort of dominated um, or run by uh, administrations further south of here. So uh, Agricola was said to have used it as a base at one point in time. The, uh, the famous um, British, well, Roman, but I suppose one of the first governors who could actually claim that the place was conquered under him. Um, and that was in the time of Vespasian, of course, who uh, wanted to finish off what he started um, before. So, anyway, uh, 
regardless of exactly which legion built, rebuilt the uh, the fortress in stone, um, it was not going to be uh, a self-governing sort of place for a, a legion. Um, <clears throat> it was looking to guard the crossroads on the river crossing. Uh, and so it was the home of um, an auxiliary uh, unit, in fact. Um, the Astertians, uh, which, if I'm right, they were cavalry-based. Um, uh, as, in fact, most uh, of the auxiliaries were. And then we know at some point they departed and uh, um, submersions or uh, uh, something like that um, not Samaritans but it sounds a little bit looks a little bit like that on paper uh, another unit of auxiliaries uh, turned up towards the end of uh, the Roman life of the um, <coughs> place uh, and that's when you certainly have some uh, either additions or or extras going on with the uh, the sixth um, legion. Uh, the uh, town here actually does sit pretty much on where you would expect to find uh, the um, small little Celtic town. Uh, they already know roughly where that is and it's just up the road there, it's just behind that house uh, where you've got sort of the, almost a circular space um, at what was the centre of the village uh, and the rest of the um, the rest of the sort of Roman settlement would have would literally have been sort of from here sort of straight forward which is where the town is this of course does mean that there's an issue with finding out that much about uh, Ribchester because you can't dig on land <laughs> where there are houses but it's quite possible that there are Roman remains of this sort of little township right below our feet <laughs> 